dignitaries of the Nas, Mr. K. Shranjan, Mr. Shakti Sagar, Dr. Ananda Shankar, and my dear students, guests, faculty, it is indeed my honor to welcome the distinguished people here today to participate in the ASPIES discussion on the last lecture. I am told this is the second version of ASPIRE, although this is the sixth cultural festival on our campus. Actually, many of the guests here do not need introduction. The association of Mr. J. S. Ranjan is as long as my association with Pitts Pilani Hyderabad campus. So, he was a person who allotted the land. And he was a person who is behind in the establishment of this campus, especially in expediting the improvements. <laughs> that made it possible for us to start a campus in a record time of 11 months. That was a strong wish of our late Sri K.K. Villa, and which we fulfilled. Dr. Ananda Shankar has been associated with this campus through her lectures in Stigmate and also as a chief guest in cultural festival. She has also participated in several other workshops in human humanities and social sciences electives to be introduced on campus during our curriculum redesign. And the other professor, he comes here for delivering one of our course of theater arts. Like that, all of them have an association with this campus. I am indeed happy to have them here on this important occasion. Just to say a few words about the cultural festival, which cultural festival Vyasis in Pilani, the version of Pilani is called Vyasis. It is 42 years old and the most sought after in the not only, not only the North India, in all parts of the country. People aspire to be a part of that function. So we used to get a lot of pressure, although we used to tell the outside people, we as faculty are there only in the background. It is only the students who are conducting this festival. The same festival has been replicated here by its students. It is completely students organize the function. Faculty are completely in the background. I did not even know until yesterday that they are organizing such a function. That is just to give an idea what is our involvement in this function. Anyway, thank you for kindly accepting that invitation and to come over here on a holiday to participate in this function. I once again welcome you all and I wish all of you an exciting experience during this discussion. Thank you. Thank you. 
international and uh, he has managed to balance very successfully a career in business while maintaining and preserving the art of theatre within Hyderabad with over 32 major productions directed by him. So without further ado, Mr. Pranava Singh. Something you want from different 
segments of your mind which work, it seems, superficially uh, as opposites. But as time passes, as you progress more and more, you learn more, you realize how ignorant you are about so many things in life, you also begin to realize that there really is no contradiction. And that from being, uh, being trained, being groomed to being a hard-nosed businessman for the group. For, the, for a business group, it's about business. You have to deliver numbers. What am I? I very tentatively re-entered the field of theater in Hyderabad. I joined a not-for-profit uh, group called the Magic Circle of Hyderabad. And I was a bit apprehensive, you know, how will my employers take it. But they were extremely encouraging, right up to the chair. But so long, you know, please go ahead. You know you're delivering on your works. And I began the process of running, doing both parallel. And in the process, uh, what I discovered was that what I thought was my work life and what I thought is my play life are really not uh, antithetical. In a sense, they are not, they are not, need not be two separate compartments. You take learning from one into the other and from the play into the work. For example, one of the things I brought from my work into my play was that, you know, dramatic set of matter work was a so-called not-for-profit organization. So how do we define not-for-profit? The so far, the definition so far, it seems used to be lost making. We were always in deficit. Said, Come on, there's a deficit. Said, yeah, we're not for profit. I said, excuse me, not for profit doesn't mean uh, loss making. The, the moment you do something out of passion and you don't do it for money, doesn't mean that money becomes unimportant. Money is a resource, just like any other resource. You have talent, you have equipment, you have human resource. You need money. So therefore we started the process of making DCH into an organization which could afford better productions. We may be not for profit, but if you have more resources, you can be more ambitious. By perpetually being poor, you are perpetually compromising. That was one lesson I brought in from my work into my trade. Similarly, a lesson I brought from my play to the work was something we had studied in school. There's a lovely story called uh, uh, Tom Sawyer, Adventures of Tom Sawyer. Has anybody read it? There's, there's a story in that uh, book called the Painting Whitewashing the Fence, where Tom is instructed by his aunt to paint the fence. And it's a beautiful, glorious summer day. He wants to go to the river and fish. But he has to paint the fence. So he starts the job, and as his friends come past, walk past, and John says, Hey, you got work. The what permission? Can't you see? I'm having a blast, I'm painting this fence. And slowly, all his friends light up. They painted him things, pieces of string, exciting looking stones, the small insects, for what? to be able to paint that fence. So the definition became very clear to Tom as a, as a little lad of eight or nine that if it is something you have to do, it's work. If it's something you're not obliged to do, but you choose to do, it's play. Now, if you take that, why, if you think about it, why would I join the marriage at the latter part, work like a mad fool, six days, most often seven days a week, Travel to Delhi by the morning flight, come back at 8 o'clock, go straight to a rehearsal, rehearse till 11 o'clock, go back to the factory in the morning at 7.50 a.m. and we have a punch clock in those days, not those sexy time of, you know, the 2014. We have to punch in the mechanical clocks and the car recorded at what time. If you came at 7.51, it used to be hot up at the general manager. Why would I do that? Because it was play. Conversely, if you apply it, if you look at your work, as do I have to do this? What am I doing today? Am I enjoying it? Am I doing it because I love it? You are bringing in a much higher level of ultimate productivity into your work today. So don't do what I taught myself. Don't do anything because you have to.
Provided, provided. 
price and provision. You are able to honestly look at yourself and make an evaluation of what went wrong. Objective analysis. Objective. Do leave behind all the options. Look at it from an audience's point. Which is the second uh, learning, I would say, which drifted from the first learning about money. That it is possible to bounce back in a very, very short span of time. Which again, another, you know, I have had a long business career. Which learning again came to me. I followed a project with my heart. Went madly after it, brought it to a stage. Stopped using the other half of my mind, which should be more focused on money. And it made a huge loss. Then you look back, may take stock of yourself, and you are able to correct errors only. So don't ever think this is the end of the road. It's always possible, but the only thing that, if you've heard of uh, uh, the scientist called Richard Feynman, have you heard of him? He's, uh, he was supposed to be the father of one of the pioneers in nanotechnology. He's written a wonderful book. It's semi autobiographical because surely you're joking, Mr. Feynman. It's about his interactions and experiences of life. And a lovely uh, sentence in that, he says, your assumptions are your windows, are the windows on your life. Just think about it. Your assumptions are the windows on your life. You have to keep cleaning them from time to time to see the picture there. So the only requirement of when you come to the bottom or when you think you've done a bad performance, wipe off your assumptions. Don't take your audience from granted. These are all related lessons. I'm, I'm pressing it. These are, you take things for granted. You take my client for granted, my audience for granted. You know that, oh, I'll do this. They'll accept it. They won't. Wipe out your assumptions. Wipe out your assumptions. Look at you and you can have a brand new, brilliant performance the next year. These are the two or three quizzes a lot to share. It's 40 years. Unfortunately, I'm trying to do in 12 minutes the most critical learning that I had. There will be a question answer session after this. Please feel free if you need elaboration on any of these points. Thank you.
before I before we walked into the hall, I waited for a while in the director's room. I was uh, browsing through his bookshelf. I noticed that he enjoys reading uh, Chetan Bhagat. <laughs>
adjust much there. He decided to take study leave and go abroad. So he went to London Business School. He wanted to do his MBA from there. His wife also went with him. And maybe he found the course there very demanding and his wife was kind of uh, hanging around. So it seems that he encouraged his wife that while I am studying, while I am doing my assignments, he can roam around London. And his wife found someone else and uh, <laughs> And then uh, he felt very miserable in, uh, in uh, Canada. He also got into some controversy. Many of, some of you may be aware that Coca-Cola has a huge uh, manufacturing unit in Palga. And there was a big controversy that they are uh, in Kerala. Social activists are very strong. So they found that their Coca-Cola people are drawing lots of groundwater, which they are not supposed to do. There was a Supreme Court case. But this friend of mine, he bailed them off. He gave them some report that they are not really destroying the groundwater levels and all that. He got into some controversies, some inquiries that are about to start the next day. Then he decided to move to Delhi, he joined the ministry. He remains in Delhi, he has not gone back to Kerala. But he has become very cynical. In fact, he is on my Facebook. If you read his posts, particularly as the elections come by, when you see his posts, they are very, very cynical and they will be kind of critical of everything. He will say that the whole system is not done. So <clears throat> this is the story of uh, Suresh. He is, as, as we say, he is a loser. So, so. Now let me tell you the second story. The second story, uh, let's call him Ramesh. The second story is of Ramesh. Uh, incidentally, these people's names start with these letters. So Suresh is actually someone whose name starts with S. Ramesh is someone whose name starts with R. So Ramesh was my classmate at uh, IIM. Now, Ramesh uh, was from South, he is from Andhra. He went to Rishi Valley School in Madhapali, then he went to Pilani, and then he chose to do his MBA and he came to IIM. Now, once people get into IIM, their entire uh, worldview changes. They think that they have arrived big, and uh, they, all they become very fake kind of people, they become very artificial. In IIM, we used to call it a uh, corpo look, like so everyone uh, grooms himself very well. They buy expensive clothes, even when they are kind of taking stroll in the evening, they'll be wearing shoes and semi formal kind of clothes. And so that is how it is, life is. But we, but I saw uh, Ramesh very, very different. For example, in, I'll be providing some examples. In IIM, <clears throat> just to show that you are you're kind of a very cool kind of a guy, lots of people get uh, motorcycles, they buy bikes, they move around in the campus or so this person used to drive on a moped, not, a, not even a scooter, a moped, so to speak, and a very old uh, moped. Everyone would listen to uh, hard metal, uh, you know, Led Zeppelin, and all those kind of bands. He would listen to Carnatic music, and he would play Vridangam. In fact, he got a Vridangam in the nights, then uh, it would be a bit kind of, people would be quiet, he would start his Vridangam practice. And in many ways, and he would wear this while everyone else would be wearing corpo kind of dresses. He will be wearing, uh, like it's called Veshti, isn't it? Dhoti, those Veshti kind of thing. Dhoti kind of thing, a shirt, Dhoti. So, he, he lived in his own world. He did not bother about, uh, he was not influenced by the PS group. He decided not to become a fake person. There is nothing artificial in it. From campus he joined, uh, <coughs> uh, I think, Waters and Boys. Later on, he worked there for a few years and then he, has, then he quit his uh, professional life, he quit uh, management. He learned more of Vridangam and now he is a regular Vridangam player. In fact, he participates in lots of concerts in Chennai. I learned very recently that Air Rahman has uh, kind of uh, requested him to compose some piece in which he plays the Vridangam along with Air Rahman, etc. So he, he's, uh, he has shunt the mainstream corporate world, he has got into his own universe, he is growing in that. The opportunity to play with Air Rahman is not, not a small thing. I mean, in the music world, maybe it is one of the ultimate recognitions. And he is content, I occasionally talk to him, he comes to Rahman occasionally. So he is feeling a very content kind of thing. But it is not the life one would have imagined a Bits, uh, Bits and or an IM alumni to be leading. So that is his story. The third story is of uh, Mahesh. 
At the end of it, I will tell you why these four stories, what can be learned from, from these four films. The third story is of Mahesh. Mahesh, actually, if you see on bio, I did a short course and uh, oh, it's not put there. I, I studied at uh, LSE also, that is School of Economics. I did a course called the Gurukul program. She has been Gurukul on a British government scholarship. So, <coughs> Mahesh was my classmate there. Uh, <coughs> Mahesh also attended uh, Vitspilani. Then he went to IIM Ahmedabad and uh, he did quite well in both Vitspilani in IIM Ahmedabad. And in, even in our course in London, we, find, we found him to be a very, very grounded person. He, after completing the IIM Ahmedabad, MBA from IIM Ahmedabad, he got into investment banking. He became a he became a he, he was the country representative for Rothschild investment funds. He struck some very major investment deals for Rothschild. He worked abroad. He worked he worked in Singapore. He worked in Hong Kong. And even in our class, I would realize that he was very very grounded. I mean, he would uh, let us say in a LSE and all classes are very very in a very participatory manner. So he would ensure that everyone was speaking. He would not impose his views. And I also realized that we had a breadth of interest. Whatever topic was being discussed in our class, it may not be a mainstream uh, financial or economic decision, but even if it was on the social sector, even if it was in arts and culture, he, he, he was uh, contributing. And then I found out that he, he, he leads a very balanced kind of life, what is known as the work-life balance. Even at LSE, while we had to do lots of assignments, lots of studies, but we would still uh, find time he would still find time to kind of uh, go to gaze, to theatre, to <coughs> you know, rest and all, all those kind of things. And uh, I, I really kind of admired him while, while we were there. Later on also he has started very close friendship. And he's someone who, who I kind of, uh, if someone tells me that give 20 examples of good people, role model people, exemplar people, I would name Mahesh as uh, one of them. That is the third story. The last story, uh, let me call him Arunesh. Arunesh. So, <coughs> Arunesh was also my classmate at uh, IIM. In, uh, I mean, since time is running out, I also need to kind of bring this four stories to a closure. I'll just tell you very quick uh, two, three things about uh, him. In IIM, uh, different people respond to that uh, with liberal kind of an atmosphere. See, you, you come from uh, Maybe some, I don't, based of course, I presume when Professor Rao was there, there was a high level of policing on you. People told, tell me that he used to kind of check, take attendance, who was have come, who have not come, and punish them and all that. I hope you have changed now, Professor Rao. <laughs> but uh, <coughs> you have changed and it has changed for the better. So, <coughs> so, different people, when they come from this kind of a regulated and controlled environment, and when they come to a place like I am, no one monitors you, no one polices you, and you, you do whatever you want to. In our Calcutta, even attendance is not compulsory. I know of some of my classmates who never attended a single class. Even I, when I was in the second year, I had taken a decision that I had prepared for the civil services. I didn't go for a single class in the second year. And yet I completed both my courses. So it's a very liberal kind of a atmosphere there. So this man, Mahesh, uh, what I'm calling him, Arunesh. Arunesh. Arunesh got into serious problem with drugs, hard liquor, and uh, uh, a very deviant kind of lifestyle. He would be in the, <coughs> just outside our campus, then there is a shop where all this illicit, illicit liquor was sold. But the shop was called Shambhu, Shambhu Thaba. It was called a Thaba, but it, sell, it sold everything other than what a Thaba would be. So his, uh, he used to tell that his address is not, uh, our hostel was called the White House, the hostel where we used to live in Alberta. He was also a White House in May. But we used to talk amongst each other that his address is not White House, his address should be Shambhu Shambhu And I remember in the yearbook which came out when all of us passed, students bring together this yearbook and all. So it was mentioned that he is more as a bit of Shambhu Dhaba rather than Alberta. So he got into all these uh, kind of things. He was uh, wasting his life. He did not get placed in the first few days. In IIM, here also it must be happening. Companies come for campus placement. And companies are ranked, and students' birth is ranked 
on which data you get placed. So suppose you are placed on the very first day, then in that language you are called a start, start a day one place so okay. If you are placed on second day, you are not a start, but still you are working at the guy. So day three that is called job name is a, I mean he has to re-examine himself. So fourth third you is at the wrong place. So this person did not get placed even till the, I mean he was really at the dregs and because of this, other kind of problems with drugs and alcohol and all that. He had bad grades also. So, and he was not very presentable. He had become like a hippie. He had grown his hair. Like, and in Ayana, as, as I said, everyone looks at you as a corpo kind of thing. And everyone is a stereotype of, uh, of, of a particular image. So, <clears throat> this person had a great uh, difficulty in getting a job. He got some job where also he kind of, I think it was. Uh, there is a company called uh, ITW Signal. They employed them. They, they are one of the late companies which come to the campus. He got a job there. He did not do well. But the concluding point which I want to tell about him is that uh, we had lost track of him. He was also not, not a very great friend of mine. But I learned about a few years ago that he has come And that, that happened due to some personal tragedies. Again, some family problem. His parents uh, were almost uh, kind of. Uh, he did not uh, attend to his parents when they were very, when they were in tremendous need of him, and he felt uh, very bad about that episode. And then he kind of reinvented himself. And today he is a very, very successful professor in a Canadian university. There is a university called Manitoba, University of Manitoba in Winnipeg. He teaches uh, business management there, and he is a big authority. In fact, I visited him in Canada. Canada. I went to Canada for some other work, official work, and he went to Winnipeg. He is a global authority now on what are called uh, product recalls. Wherever some products, quality products are recalled, like Toyota recalls so many cars, Matter recalls so many defective toys, he rushes to those areas and studies what happened, why this recall. And he is a recall guru now. In fact, any discussion in America, Canada, in management seminar, where product recall is being talked about. You will find Arunesh to be one of the speakers. So his life went through a down and, uh, and uh, then he kind of uh, stuck back and he is now at a very, very uh, eminent uh, position. So these are the four lives of Suresh, uh, Ramesh, Mahesh and Arunesh. If you look at the four of them, Suresh is a loser. Arunesh could have been a loser but he kind of uh, checked himself and, and moved up. And he found a calling in academics where perhaps uh, the fact that you have taken drugs in the past or you have done a heavy drinker, they count as positive things. So, so he, he was uh, accepted in that, that kind of an environment. I hope that is not true of you, Professor. <laughs> so, <clears throat> then uh, Mahesh, as I said, is a very popular kind of a career. He did his engineering, he did his management. Work for investment banking, one of the leaders. And Ramesh, as I described him, he lives in his own world, but in his universe, he is doing very, very well. I have exceeded my time. I, I can go on for a few more minutes to explain what are the lessons to learn from these, these four lines. But I think it is good enough if I stop here, because you can draw your own lessons. What kind of lives you want to be? Actually, why I proposed this story, this story was that Sri Ram had told me, I think they suggested to me, but I may have to tell them about career choices or not. Is it for today's lecture or that is the 15th lecture? I mix up. He has invited me for two lectures in fixed succession. One lecture was supposed to be on career, inspiring people to join the civil service. I thought that I have to speak on that theme today. So I prepared this narrative in my mind, thinking that I will conclude by telling you that all jobs, all careers are okay. You don't have to get into ideas. The person who has got into the IES is languishing. Someone who, is, who has found happiness in playing Ritanga is now playing with A.R. Rahman. Someone who was about to be lost to all of us is now a very distinguished professor. And someone else has done well in his uh, corporate life. So it is not that civil services is the ultimate or management is the ultimate or anything else is the ultimate. The point which I would like to leave you with the last thought, what uh, Pranamji mentioned, that whatever you feel you have within yourself, Try to find a way in that and then do uh, the best in, uh, in that area. So, <clears throat> my time is up. I wish you all the well and uh, hope that uh, 
you learn something out of today's discussions. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. 
So I leave that effort because I have nobody who did that for me except my mother. My mother was the only person in my life who stood by me and said, okay, son, this is what you want to do? Okay, you want me to sign on a bank guarantee? I'll sign it for you, but that's it. I'm not going to do anything more than that. You've got to make your own life. Right? And that was it. So help and be there for your friends, for your people who need a break in life. Show them some compassion. Very important. Remember, if you were right that you tried to what I was talking about, right? Because on this side of your life, your friends need a ride. Give them that ride. And it's a long ride. You need company sometimes, right? And I did that, and I've been fortunate. I got some really good friends who joined me on the ride, and, you know, we bring something interesting together. And let me leave you just with these uh, lines that always impacted me, which was that information is not knowledge, and knowledge is not wisdom. Wisdom is not truth, truth is not beauty, and beauty is not love, and love is not music. And music, to me, is all of this in my way to get ahead in life. that uh, I love watching films. Um, academically, I was 
quite uh, uh, fortunately uh, brilliant, <laughs> which is uh, uh, not easy to digest uh, because uh, I was watching movies from 4 to 7, uh, then going to school, coming back at 2.30 and uh, then uh, doing my home homework and then back again watching movies <laughs> and uh, uh, my parents thought it's okay you know she loves watching movies let her watch movies uh, but this continued you know this kind of obsession it continued right into uh, graduation uh, when i started thinking that i should do science because i loved science uh, i loved uh, you know uh, the whole temperament that comes with science uh, I wanted to do genetics. Um, I wanted to be a scientist, you see. So <laughs> I went to uh, do genetics. In fact, I even taught my college. Uh, I got a gold medal. So uh, my parents thought, wow, now she's good at this and she's going to go abroad and she's going to do a master's. You know, she's going to become this uh, uh, scientist and she's going to you know, make us all happy. Uh, but no, <laughs> I went uh, to America. And uh, the day I was leaving for America, um, I get my um, admission card for Film and Television Institute of India, uh, one of the most prestigious institutes uh, in the country for cinema. And uh, we have just 40 seats in the country. And uh, I was selected through the, the interview as well as the written exam. And uh, I was shocked because I get the admission uh, you know, ticket when I'm just boarding my flight to America. So, I go abroad, I stay there, I drop my courses and I come back. I come back to India, I join FTII and that's where I was for four years learning cinema. Because for me, it was not just passion, it was about my craft as an artist. Because cinema, uh, what you see, the whole glamour of uh, cinema, the whole glamour attached to the industry, it's not just that. There's a lot of discipline, uh, there's a lot of hard work, uh, there's a lot of uh, continuing effort behind making films. And uh, I wanted to learn the craft uh, in Film Institute. I learned the craft. And, uh, but having said that, I would say, filmmaking is not about uh, what you learn in institutions. Filmmaking is not what you learn in schools. Filmmaking is intuition. It's instinctive. It's something which comes from you, inside you. And fortunately, I was so passionate and watching so many films that uh, they were, I think, the, the best lessons for me uh, on how to make movies. Not only that, I, I think what was a turning point for me was life. The biggest teacher uh, for me was life. Um, I had taken some very ambitious steps at some points. I fell down, you know, I fell. And when I fell, I realized that you touch the bottom when you fall. And when you touch the bottom, you realize the importance of flight. So whenever I had these little roadblocks, these failures, I knew that I had to fly. And uh, one of the biggest examples of this flight is Ballad of Rusko. My film, which is in the Oscar contention, which was in the Oscar contention. Uh, it was a hard film. Uh, I took three and a half years to make this film. Uh, because I wanted to make it the way I wanted to make it. Because I'm very particular about each and area of uh, this film. Uh, I wanted to direct, I wanted to produce, I wanted to do art direction, I did the sound design, I did collaboration of music, I also did collaboration on the editing. The reason being that I wanted to have creative freedom and the way I wanted to make movies the way, the way I wanted to make movies. So, this film happened over three and a half years and I wanted to shoot it on film, not digital. So this film happened and it was very intense, tough process because uh, uh, people think this film, uh, well it's not normal films that you have in India. Uh, it's not masala. Uh, it's not uh, It's not a co great comedy. It's not a, a regular story, you know, where you have a beginning, middle and end. And there's a hero, there's a heroine. And, uh, you know, it's not a love story. Uh, this film is about a scientific guy. Um, it's about a man who aspires, who dreams. Uh, Balala Bristol is about a dreamer. 
uh, at Riva Kolbusta. And uh, he loves uh, being with nature, uh, he loves his solitude, and uh, he's the kind of guy who doesn't have great education, but he's a dreamer. So, Balad Rustam was about this guy. And uh, I made this film in a very dreamy way. It, it's, uh, it's got a dream structure to the whole film, it's surreal, uh, it's got a lot of good music. So, this film. Um, then started getting a lot of uh, attention and uh, then the Oscar happened which uh, was not something um, it's not it's not I would say a great uh, um, uh, and it's not so important but it's definitely an honor uh, so the Oscar happened and um, delighted by that because uh, end of the day uh, when you continue to do what you love doing uh, you do uh, end up getting rewards. And the rewards are not awards. The rewards are your personal satisfaction. You know, when you keep doing what you love doing, uh, and even if you fall several times, and even if you have a whole lot of failures, you do see success. In every failure, you see a stepping stone to success. You know, every failure teaches you lessons. It, uh, it makes you aspire for more and more. Because one day, when you fall down and your knees hurt, then you know that you have to get up and fight. It's a championship. Life is a big adventure. Uh, life is a championship. And if you want to win the cup, uh, then you have to get up and get going. Be in action. Uh, keep learning. And uh, well, that's what makes it, I think, uh, that's what makes life. That's what makes it all. And uh, I hope uh, <laughs> the talk is uh, useful enough for all of you. <laughs> and I hope some of you can join uh, this side. Uh, which is still making and uh, hope you have a successful evening in your lives. Thank you so much.